Hello, sorry for the odd camera angle. I am multitasking and I don't have a good place for the camera where I'm sitting, so pardon my hunching to get in frame. Um, I am having coffee in my Catalina Island mug that I got on Catalina Island. That's a good place to get a Catalina Island mug if you're looking for one. I say having coffee, there's actually not much left in there. Had coffee, I guess I should say. I would like to say a few things about the presidential election this year. You are probably sick of hearing about it. I don't care. Uh, this format seems to be the one that uh, can most give me the ability to completely say what I have to say. Uh, social media posts and texts, and it just doesn't seem adequate to get across what I would like to say. Uh, I have several issues that I'd like to address, but not all in one chunk. I'd like to break them up. The first thing I would like to address is uh, how this campaign was run by Democrats uh, this year. It was a losing campaign. Um, there's, there's no skirting around it. Uh, I'm not really much for silver linings. It was a loss. Um, there is some infighting and finger pointing uh, within the Democratic Party and Democratic voters. There usually is when there's a loss, but there is less of that this time than there has been in other election cycles. And I think that's a good thing, and I'd like to keep that trend going. Uh, soul searching is usually a good thing. Uh, talking about what went wrong and the mistakes that were made and what can be done better can be a really good thing, but it can also be destructive when it amounts to circling the wagons and firing in. In this case, I really don't think there was anything that could have realistically been done with the options that were available that would have changed the outcome. Joe Biden was not going to win this. I know he won four years ago. I know he got more votes four years ago, but it's not four years ago. His age was becoming a problem. And by problem, I don't mean it was just an issue in the campaign. His age was, was affecting his ability to run a campaign. He was already in the process of losing. And that's why the change had to be made. So sticking with Joe or comparing this cycle's numbers with what he got four years ago isn't especially helpful because we weren't in those circumstances. Given that a change had to be made, it was too late. It was too late in the process to uh, find and select and support a consensus candidate, you know, from scratch. Uh, the, the, the campaign was going. Like, the, 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 the race was started. It was in process. And the only real option was the option that was chosen. Kamala was there. She was a good candidate. Um, she was already in the office of vice president. She already had access to the campaign apparatus. She was the only real option. And uh, I feel like she was a good option. Uh, I can tell you that a lot of people felt a lot better when she jumped in than before she did. So the, the candidate was not the problem. She was really the only thing that we could do. Um, as far as the tactics used, as far as the strategy, as far as the focus of the campaign and the things that were said and done, um, I feel like all of those things were what gave us the best chance of winning. Uh, it was 
It was a competently run campaign. If you watched the debates and if you looked at the ads and if you listened to what the candidates were saying, I think for most rational people, uh, the choice was pretty clear. Uh, I don't think there was some other strategy or other focus that would have changed anything. And this is a time where it gets really easy to point fingers and say, you know, your idea of doing this is what lost us this race. And if only we had done this other thing, then it then we would have won it. I really don't think that's the case this time. With states leaning heavily into voter suppression, um, any candidate was going to be starting from behind. And any strategy was going to be swimming upstream. Uh, there, Not only are there no guarantees that anything else would have worked, I genuinely don't think anything else would have worked. Uh, this is the culmination of a long effort for supporters of that guy to get that guy elected. This is this is the long game that they've played and they've played it successfully. And we're, we're too, it's, it's kind of too late to just come up with some master strategy to thwart it. Uh, to change this is going to be a generational effort. So when you're thinking about what other liberals and Democrats did or said that you didn't like and that you don't agree with and you want to say that's the reason that we lost, please reconsider because I don't think it's true. Um, I will say that I've been a little bit annoyed with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has taken some shots um, at uh, the the Democratic leadership, I think is specifically what he said. Um, Bernie Sanders is being an opportunist, and it's gross. At this moment in history, to be an opportunist is awful. And no, he's not right. No, he doesn't have a good point. He is using this as an opportunity to take shots at the people who did everything in their power to keep this from happening. That's not cool. Please don't do that. Um, there are people who are going to need support. They're going to need help. Over the next four years, they're going to need safety, not recrimination. They are. There's already an enemy gunning for them, and that does not need to be you. So uh, if I could advise anything, it's give up on this notion that there is some other strategy, some other focus that could have been done that would have changed the outcome. In this case, I really don't think so. The question then is, what next? And that's something that uh, I will try to address in a later video.